Under this camouflage of earth and gorse is a massive concrete structure, just one of a number in the fields around here. They were actually radar stations, and they formed part of a chain of such stations right up the British Isles. There are three others on the Isle of Man, at Dolby, at Scarlet, and at Craignish. They were manned 24 hours a day during the war, and they were searching for enemy aircraft. Strictly speaking, it wasn't actually radar. In the 1940s, radar was still being developed, some of it secretly on the Isle of Man. So a much more primitive system was being used to detect unauthorized aircraft. In the fields around here were huge masts over 300 feet high. Some were transmitting and some were receiving. And the resulting information was fed into these bunkers, allowing the operators to get a fix on the enemy aircraft. By carefully measuring the time lag between the signal going out and its reflection back off the moving object, the position of the aircraft could be calculated. If it was suspicious, the information was fed to a central control in England and action was taken. The masts were a dramatic addition to the countryside and at Niabal they dominated the landscape. The winches used to stand them up are still there and in some fields the concrete blocks which tethered them down are still there. The bunkers were carefully constructed to be sealed from the outside and had airlocks. All the air coming in and out was filtered against possible gas attacks. Filtering the air was most important and most of the equipment is still here. These trunks brought the air in from outside, which was then filtered through this unit. In this room, there would have been banks of oscilloscopes displaying the readings from the giant masts outside, and above here, a huge canopy that took away the heat from the instruments below. <laughs> 